Well, I wish I was saying happy Sunday to you guys, but it's not Sunday, it's Monday, and I apologize for the screen reflecting on my glasses. It probably does it other videos too, but for some reason I'm noticing it tonight. It's like weird. It's like I got no eyeballs, just, yeah. Anyway, it's not Sunday, it's Monday. Um, and I want to apologize to you for that. Um, I originally planned to make sure to record a lesson before I went out and started working to clean up snow yesterday. Um, before I do that, let me tell you what text to go to. Uh, James 2, 15 through 17, and Matthew 11, verse 28. So it'd be James 2, verses 15 through 17, and Matthew 11, verse 28. Um, but then I remember that Sister Scott, she had to go to work, um, and we had some snow around here, ladies and gentlemen, and I knew there was no way her car was going to get out of its spot if, if Jordan and I didn't get out there and start cleaning it up, um, and it was cold, too. It was really cold, <clears throat> and I made the mistake of only putting on my regular L.L. Bean boots and not my heavy boots, but anyway. We got out there and started cleaning up snow, and uh, and we cleaned up snow, and we cleaned up snow, and we cleaned up snow, and and, uh, and the banks look a lot different around here than they did just a few days ago. I mean, we've got some snow around here now. Um, well, in the process of doing that, you know, we have to move vehicles around so we can plow in different spots, and and I had the trailer in the driveway, and um, we hooked the truck up to that, the expedition up to it. And I decided, so well, let me just run it a mile or two, you know, down the road. I went up State Road, just gonna go like just a mile or two, turn around, come back, blow a little bit of the snow off of the trailer and off the truck a little bit, maybe you know. Um, and this was after we'd already been working for hours. I mean, we I was tired and I was cold already. <clears throat> and I got about a mile from the house, was starting starting to think about where I was gonna turn around. Um, and all of a sudden. I had no power or no, the, the, the engine just stopped. Um, the light still worked, everything, instruments, the radio, fan, air conditioner, or, or heater, everything was still blowing and working, but just no engine. And I had that trailer on the back and I drifted over to the shoulder against the bank of the snow to be out of people's way as much as I could get out of people's way. And of course, now I've got a trailer and a vehicle. I don't, don't even try to do anything when I try to turn it back on. It just doesn't even react. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, call Sister Scott. We call roadside assistance. You know, she had to get off at work early. Fortunately, yesterday happened to be a slow day or, or they had extra help or something. She was able to get away after about 45 minutes. Um, so she was able to come take the trailer back with her vehicle um but then we still had to call roadside assistance and i was there in that um vehicle waiting for for a little while and like i said it was already it was cold i don't think temperature got above nine degrees yesterday um and uh finally get back and of course we're not finished cleaning up the snow in the driveway we're almost done close to being done um, so I decided I'm going to knock that last little bit out before I come inside and record the lesson for you guys. And, uh, I did, I got it cleaned up in front of the house and I got the driveway cleaned up. Of course, at one point the plow lifted up and set in that, in that snow bank. And I had to shovel it out because the truck was hung up and stuck in the snow bank. So it wouldn't reverse. I'd do that. Well, by the time I got in, I mean, I knew when I was sitting out there by the road with that, waiting for the roadside assistance and Janice and all, I knew already my toes were numb. And uh, especially my left foot. And so by the time I got in to the house, finished cleaning up, both sets of toes were numb. I couldn't feel them at all. And I got my boots off and they were cherry red. I'm glad to see they were red. They weren't turning black, but they were, they were, you know, I was, I had the first, you know, stages of frostbite and I got them in some, uh, 
I got them in some lukewarm water, let them soak there for a while. The feeling came back. Um, and, uh, and then I, I was done. I just, I, I was just, I'd been out in so long. I was just overcome with weariness and tired and I, I was done for the day. I couldn't, couldn't seem to get my brain to work and I just needed to rest. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's the story. And, you know, thank goodness I've got all my toes still. Um, but it was, it was a rough day and at the end there it could have been really bad. Uh, I would, I would have had been an inch shorter than I am, except you wouldn't be able to see it because it'd been in my boots, but it was close. It was, uh, I've never had any kind of frostbite before really, but that time it was, it, I was scared for a little bit there. Cause I, it took me, it took a long time to get feeling back in those toes. But, uh, anyway, I think we also, um, I'm fine. We got the snow cleared off. Everything looks good around here now. That truck, I tell you, has been a wonderful, wonderful blessing to have. You know, we're saving lots of money by having that truck now. We said we we made it all back the first year, and now everything else has just been, you know, saving money from lots of money going out to plowing. So it's been a blessing to have that. But anyway, let's continue to pray for everyone who's been fighting COVID. Um, continue to pray for our country, our nation. I've got, I think, my family members down in Augusta most of them are doing okay I know Tony my brother-in-law he was diagnosed positive well, my sister was too but she seems to be okay uh Tony has a tendency to get pneumonia anyway but he doesn't seem to have it but he's he's it's still he's still fighting it after about a week so um keep him in prayer um Rianne, give me a call let me know how you're doing um and uh, I'll keep you guys posted. I think everyone in Texas is doing okay. So mo for the most part, people are okay. You know, I, I think I mentioned last Sunday, um, you know, my papa, my papa's first cousin died with COVID here about a week and a half ago. Um, but anyway, just keep praying for everybody. There is starting to be some signs of hope. Uh, hospitalizations are still up around the nation, but the case count is coming down. Um, so, so that's a good thing. Let's read our text. James 2, 15 through 17 says, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be you warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So today's title is Friends in His Footsteps. Let's pray. God, we love you today. We ask you to touch the lesson. Let it be quick into our hearts. Let us take it and do some good with it and have some good done in us. We ask you also to put your hand on all those who have had COVID or fighting COVID or have lost ones to COVID your hand and help us and protect us in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Friends in his footsteps. You know, it, one of the realities of living in the last two and a half years has been just how much more distance has been put between us and, and other people, you know, unless it's our immediate family members. And, and we already had a problem in this nation with everybody becoming more and more distant from each other. Um, and to fill in that gap, we had the, frankly, what I think are, are not, not any real substitutes to fill the gap, but things like, you know, electronics and social media and telephones. And, and those things aren't the same as being in people's presence and, and sharing a meal and sharing a conversation face to face. They're, they're just, lackluster and they're, they're not the same and in fact i would argue that sometimes people aren't the same people they would be in person when they're communicating some with some of those other methods you know i think i think we've seen proof the last few years that people in per, who in person would be more careful with their words and 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 feel more connected and and less inclined to say something hurtful and harmful um, they don't feel that same 
empathy and that same sense of compassion uh, when they're communicating, you know, via social media or other electronic means and they say horrible things and they, they become really ugly at times. And so this distance, this distance friendship is, it's just not, it's just not um, that good. And, and I said, if it's, this pandemic has added to a trend that was began by electronics, but I think it really began before even social media. You know, I think it, we've seen this slow but sure uh, increase in isolation and insulation uh, between people and their neighbors, people and their friends, people in, in extended family has been really going on for decades. You know, you know, there was a time and it still is, there still is, still is the case in, in some regions of the world and even probably some pockets here in the United States where people in a community are real community. They actually communicate every day and they work together every day. And, and well, that hasn't been the American lifestyle for a long time. You know, you see people around, but you, you don't really, I mean, you can go whole, you can go weeks and weeks and weeks without ever even bumping into your neighbor. And, um, well, that, that just makes it hard to, to, to be there for people if you're literally not there, you know. You know, James's message was put your hands, your feet, your body, yourself into the act of blessing others. To say, you know, I hope you're fed. I, I hope you're warm. You know, God is with you. Be comforted and not to actually use our own hands, our own feet, our own words, our own mouths to actually do that comforting. Well, words are cheap. And frankly, keyboard clicks are cheaper. Um, so distance comforting is probably not really, I mean, it, it's not, I'm not saying it's not worth something, but it's just not worth as much. And I, I, I want to say as we slowly but surely you know, society moves back toward being a little more normal. People are able to get together a little more. And I believe it's going to happen. We, we want to reverse that trend that started long before the pandemic and long before, long before uh, MySpace. <laughs> Remember MySpace? <laughs> that thing used to exist. Um, way before that, you know, we, we want to reverse that trend and become people, people, right? Um, people, persons. We want to become into being there for others. We, we offer lots of scriptures to people, um, you know, like Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. We offer them a lot of scriptures and we want to say, hey, you know, look, the Lord is with you. Um, be comforted. Come go to him, all you who labor and heavy laden. He will give you rest. And we like offering these verses and we like offering sentiments via text messages and, and, and warm and fuzzy messages via our, our, our Instagram or our Twitter or Facebook. And, and, and we can just put that up and we can just walk off and leave it. You know, there's a term, if, if you were, when people put negative things up and they walk off and leave it, they have negative terms to that. They call it trolling or they call it sniping, right? But when you do positive things, while it may be, have good intentions, um, it's still, it's still kind of like the negative stuff in that it really doesn't cost you anything, right? It's easy to say, yeah, look what I did. I put this positive vibe out there and I'm doing my part for, for being, bringing sunshine to other people's lives. And yet it's become so commonplace and it costs you nothing. And, and you don't really know if it's helping, but you feel good about it. Right. So we offer the scriptures a lot of times I've seen you know, often people will offer scriptures or, or Christian spiritual thoughts. And, and it's real easy to do, to just put it out there, post it, and, and, and not know if it really is doing anyone any good. And, and we, we have faith that it's doing good. But James said, it's not enough to have faith. you got to act on your faith. What about following up his example that he sets in these scriptures by following his example? You know? according to the word and according to lessons that we've heard over the past, we're serving as his hands and feet in his physical absence. What good is, uh, what good is us serving as his hands and feet 
if we are unwilling to use our hands and our feet, right? Um, so it's, it's, it's not enough to just say these things. Take some time. We've got to be willing to sacrifice for, our, for people we care about, sacrifice for people we don't even know, right? And, and, and for so, so much of what we do to help others or what we say we're doing to be an encouragement to others, it just doesn't cost us anything. We've got to invest in others. A man who has friends must show himself friendly. And that doesn't mean he just puts up a smiley face and an emoji. That means he is there showing himself friendly, right? He is there himself. We've got to put our hands into this and our feet into this and our back into this and our voices into this. And more than just offer a verse, let's embody that example. He set an example going out of his way, helping others. We're supposed to follow his example, not just keep pointing to his example, but follow that example. Instead of saying, be comforted, let your loneliness be dispelled with the knowledge of his presence. Let's take James's words to heart and add, add to those words of faith. Let's add to that our company. Let's add to that our conversation. We like to quote that scripture where two or three are gathered in his name. There he is in the midst of them. Well, let's, let's add to it. Get on that phone if you can't be there with them. Take some time and, and have a conversation. And actually comfort them with your presence and maybe bring his presence into your midst that way. You know, here's the reality. A time's going to come when we're the ones going through the valley of the shadow, when we're the ones that are heavy laden, when we're the ones that are feeling defeated and alone. How much more comfort are we likely to find if we've sown the seeds of friendship and worked to cultivate them with our presence? It's, uh, in one of our recent lessons, we mentioned Dorcas. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of things we can learn from her story. We know that you know, she was a kind person that everybody loved, and she was always making clothes and, and giving to the, her needy neighbors. And look what happened whenever she was in her time of need, how the people gathered there and were surrounding her and, and, and drawing attention to the fact that they had lost this friend when she passed away. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, you know, the healer never would have come to her house, you know, if, if word hadn't gotten out, right? They rallied around her. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Don't just give that verse away. Say that verse and mean it for yourself. Come to me. Obviously, go to the Lord, but I'm going to help him in that work. So come to me too, if you labor and you're heavy laden. I'm going to try to find a way to help you get some rest. I may not be as good at it. I might not have the resources that the Lord has, but come to me anyway, and I'll do what I can. All you who labor in the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that you may, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. You've got a testimony about some times that you overcame. You have a testimony about some victories that, Maybe exactly in the same kind of trials and troubles someone else is going through. Put yourself in proximity. Be in ear. I know, oh, I know there's enough negative going on in the world that it seems like the last thing we want to do is invite someone else to unload on us, right? But bear ye one another's burdens, the, the, the apostle wrote. In this world, you will have trouble. I have overcome the world. There are things in this world. I have victories I have won. Now, obviously, I'm not the Lord. I haven't overcome the world the way he did. But there are victories that I've won that I can share. And, you know, there's going to be times when I'm going to be overcome. And I'm going to need you to share some victories of yours with me. You're going to need people to share them with you. So take some time with, for a person in need. Psalm 23, 4. Psalm 23 probably the most well-known scripture in, in the Bible, possibly one of them anyway. 
Verse four says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now we know this is talking about the Lord. But imagine, imagine how much more comforting it is. Um, not in the Lord, but how, how much more comfort it is to not be alone in that valley of shadow. You know, it, it's good that the Lord can be with him. But what if you can as well? What if even though you walk, they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, they fear evil a little bit less because in addition to the Lord being with them in spirit, you are there serving in his stead. You are with them. And your rod and your staff are also comforting them. Imagine how much better it is for you would be for you if you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death and how much less you would fear evil knowing that your friend here on earth was there with you, taking his example, being the Lord's emissary in your life during that time and comforting you with, with their rod and their staff, right? I don't, I don't want us to just get used to just giving what is easy and costs us nothing and, cons- and thinking we have done the work of helping others, done the work of healing others, done the work of, of, care, of caring for others. Because we're going to want that back, right? We need to cast our bread on the waters. And we're going to want that when we're in our time of need. We're going to want, it's going to be nice and comforting to know the Lord's there, but it's going to be nice and comforting to feel an actual warm hand or warm arm around our shoulders, to hear the actual voice of a friend speaking the Lord's word to us, right? So don't just tell them about the friend that sits closer than a brother. Do your best to be that kind of friend yourself to them. Follow his example. Let's be friends in his footsteps so that when the day comes when we need friends followed in his footsteps, they will gather around our bedside the way they gathered around Dorcas's bedside. I love you today. Uh, have a wonderful week. Let's, fingers crossed we can have a service this Sunday in person. Um, as far as I know, I don't think we got a storm coming over the weekend. I know there is one brewing in the middle of the nation, but I don't know that it's going to track our way or if it's going to be significant, but I'm hoping we don't have any more big ones like the one we just had for sure. You know, I'm sure we'll have some more snow, but if we can, we can stay away from, you know, the foot plus storms. I'm, I'm okay. I've had my feel. <laughs> I love you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.